Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Elliot, I'm a doctor in the UK and I specialise in psychiatry and on my channel I try and do educational videos around mental health, mental illness, stuff to do with medicine in general. So if you like that sort of thing, do check out the other videos. Those of you that have followed my channel for a little while will know that I'm very passionate obviously about medicine, about mental health and improving the care of mental illness. But I'm also really passionate about improving healthcare in general for people in the LGBTQ plus community. And that's why I'm so happy to be watching the first episode of It's a sin. This goes back to the 1980s when HIV first started appearing. It's a really pivotal moment in both medical and queer history. It's definitely before my time but it's had such a profound influence on my life probably without me even realizing it. I'm almost certain that I'm going to learn something too by watching this with you. Let's crack on. I'll give you a call and let you know the number. I mean it, it's different on the mainland. If you see something left on a bus or a tube, anything left on its own, don't touch it, all right? So they must be either on the Isle of Man or the Isle of Wight. It's probably the Isle of Wight. Homophobia was pretty rampant in the 80s as it was, let alone in more isolated rural communities like the Isle of Wight. There's some things your mother didn't pack. I don't want you getting some girl in trouble, but make sure they all get used. Your mother's right, it is different on the mainland. It's a lot more fun. I imagine it is, but I also don't think it's got anything to worry about of getting girls in trouble. Father, forgive my son Roscoe. He has fallen into the pit of Sodomy. Save him, oh Lord. Already what I love about this is that they're looking at people's stories from really, really different communities. It's not people that are born and bred in the big city in London. And these are views that are still held by a lot of people today that, okay, maybe at this point it wasn't illegal to be gay and it wasn't a mental illness anymore. Well, actually, technically it was still in the ICD, even though it was removed from the DSM. But still, there was a huge amount of people that felt it was morally wrong. And as the show says, it's a sin. But it could take months to heal the boy. How do I cope with Oscar away and no money coming in? Again, to heal him. Society is there. We have anticipated everything. What is he doing? Your son has the devil in him tonight, Rosa. You hear reports of people having things like exorcisms with people genuinely thinking the devil was inside of them and that that was the reason that they were gay. And then when they're thinking about healing... Well, that's conversion therapy. Importantly, conversion therapy is still not banned. It is still happening today. Unfortunately, I suspect there's a lot of mental health professionals, probably including some psychiatrists, that are actively contributing to such a harmful, damaging practice. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs> Excellent. No! 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 The strength it takes to stand up to your family like that, but also the horrible position to be in where you've got to choose between the prospect of being yourself versus staying and still having a family. And what's sad and what's scary is that, okay, maybe it's less common that that happens today, but it still does. Just doing my job, sir. Well? His English accent ain't bad, is it, Neil Patrick Harris? I've heard worse. If you could just stay behind. Take your jacket off. It's all about tiny little particles of cotton. They get right. under the fingernails. They can get into the bloodstream. Can they? Tiny little fibres burrowing in. Right. So, you've got to wash. At the end of every day, give yourself a good scrub. Fingernails between the fingers. Don't forget the thumbs. Otherwise, all those fibres can get inside. Come on. We'll start washing. I want to see your technique. When we do hand washing and stuff as part of infection control in hospitals, this is not exactly the same thing. All those tiny fibres, eliminate them. Every single dirty little bugger. Come on, take your shirt off. Come on, shirt off. Huh? Yeah, that's necessary. Poor little Colin. You've got to take the arm and you've got to clean it. And clean it again. It's the oh, breathing I can't cope clean with. It's this heavy breathing. Clean it again. Clean it. And clean it again. Clean it. And clean it again. Clean it. And clean it again. And then under the arm. Sorry. 
I had a Penhaligon account going through my head, so I thought I'd do a little bit of homework, if that's all right. He knew what was going on. It's probably a pattern of behaviour, and he's coming to rescue him. Thank God. I've got to say, he does pick them very well. Mr Hart does tend to know, if you see what I mean. Where are you from? Pringos. It's in South Wales. I guess it would be, you give that away slightly. But I don't suppose there's a girlfriend waiting back home in Wales, is there? Perhaps a boyfriend? No. But would there be, if you could? You don't have to worry about me. I'm not remotely interested. If you insist on asking, and really I can't get a word in edgeways with you, dear God, <laughs> but I live in Hackney with a very nice man from the Algarve, and we've been together for decades, so you're perfectly safe with me, Colin Morris Jones. Really, though, perfectly safe. So there isn't a boyfriend. No. But you'd like there to be. Yes. Oh, my God. Don't worry, I won't tell anyone. Another pint for the bender, please. <laughs> it's a very, very powerful moment when you say that to yourself and admit it for the first time. And even nowadays, it can be difficult to find that safe space to be able to say it and admit it for the first time, let alone what it would have been like in the 1980s. No two people's experience is ever the same, but from my own sort of coming to terms, coming out experience, actually, I find that scene really powerful and really quite moving. So the other day, I was talking to my friend, and he said they found 41 men with this cancer thing. And they all died at the same time in New York. And they were all gay. What? Did they all die on the same day? Yeah, that's what it said. Because my uncle lives in Brooklyn. He said all of us were exactly the same cancer. <laughs> People did think it was a cancer. It was also called a gay flu. But what we know is that the human immunodeficiency virus, that's what HIV stands for, suppresses the immune system and leaves you more vulnerable to lots of different infections, bacterial infections, parasitic ones, fungal ones, and viral infections. And some viruses, as well as causing inflammation and infection, can also cause some cancers. So if your immune system is suppressed low enough, some of these patients that had HIV were initially presenting with cancers rather than with clear signs of infection. I like it though. It was more fun when it was illegal. But what about your neighbours? Do they know about you? No. We are secret. When I leave the house, I dress like a lady. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. They know. They've always known. Yeah. It's like the official history of the world says that men like us have always been hidden away in secret, but then there's the real world where we've been living together for all this time. What about your families? Do... Well, I moved on from them. How do you mean? I've moved on. Again, having to choose between being yourself and keeping your family. For him, he's been able to find a new family that accepts him and that loves him, which is wonderful. And he's right. Gay people have been there all throughout history. Even if you go back to the Roman times, there was... I mean, the gays were everywhere then. Whether history chooses to acknowledge that or not, different ball game. Same with trans people. Trans people have been part of our life forever, whether we choose to have seen them and respected them and appreciate them or not. And this is my best friend, Jill. No, I'm sorry, no. As drag goes, that is completely unconvincing. He needs a good shave. Look at the five o'clock shadow. He's so manly. <laughs> I'm the only one who is. <laughs> She's camper than me. The five o'clock shadow, even when I do shave, is the biggest reason I could never, ever do drag and get one. Oh, not doing it well, anyway. Michelle would tear me to pieces. That cold came back. Juan Pablo. Uh-oh. Do you remember he had that silly little cough when the airline went bust? PCP. Pneumocystis. It's hard to tell, though. He does make a three-act play of it. They've taken him into hospital. Oh. Sorry. Is he alright? Yeah, fuss over nothing. They said it was pneumonia. Then they said it was like something you get from birds. Psittacosis. They said it was strange. They said it was some kind of psittacosis. 
So HIV gets into your system, your immune system is weakened and is suppressed, which means bugs that your immune system would normally fight off without you even being aware that they're fighting them actually now start to go unopposed and cause problems. So usually weak bacteria, viruses, fungal infections, parasitic infections are now allowed to kind of run riot. Now initially I thought they were referring to a type of fungal infection on the lungs called PCP. It's caused by a strain called pneumocystis. It's what they used to call an AIDS defining illness. So this fungus would only be able to cause this infection if your immune system was very, very severely suppressed. But actually, psittacosis is caused by a different bug. It's caused by a bacteria called Chlamydia psittaci. People with a good, healthy immune system can get it if they're in close proximity to birds that tend to harbour the bug. But if not, usually it's a sign that your immune system is weakened. Hello, good morning. Oh, Colin, you'll have to work through your lunch, I'm afraid. Mr Coltrane's off sick, so you'll have to cover. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. The writing of this show is so good already that I feel attached to Mr. Coltrane, Zodio Patrick Harris. I feel quite attached to Colin, actually, and quite protective over Colin already. And if they draw you in like that, we all know what's going to happen next. I think our hearts are going to be broken a lot this series. Henry, do you have a visitor? So all of the PPE, the personal protective equipment, so the gown, the gloves, the mask, that's actually going to be to protect Henry, not to protect Colin. It's all about trying to reduce Henry's exposure to other bugs and other potential infections. They said it could have been there for years, sitting on my chest. This bit popped up to have a look. So that's actually a type of cancer. That's called a Kaposi sarcoma, and it's caused by the HHV8 virus, the human herpes virus number eight, because there's lots of different forms. We said before that your immune system gets suppressed, and now all of a sudden bugs that usually would be fought off can actually go and cause damage, and this is one of them. We also talked before about the idea that viruses can cause cancers. In this case, this is a virus that has caused this type of cancer called a Kaposi sarcoma. Kaposi sarcomas can appear anywhere on the skin, but they can also occur on the lining inside the mouth and they can occur on some of the watery linings that cover some of the organs so in this case they can actually appear on things like the lining around the lungs it's not the same thing as Juan Pablo no it's bad luck two of us getting sick at the same time what is he he's gone to Portugal <laughs> His mother descended. I'm taking him home. <laughs> I've tried writing, but I can't phone Portugal from here. So he's seriously ill, in a hospital bay all on his own, with people covered in masks. He doesn't have any family with him, and the person that he loves is also sick, and he has no idea whether he's even still alive or not. And the sad thing is, this is not going to be an unrealistic representation of thousands and thousands of people's experiences in this time. It's really sad. <laughs> Pubs are a diverse thing in the UK. You get some lovely ones and you get some proper grossy ones too. But is this Colin's first time going to a gay pub? Cheer the fuck up. You're dragging the whole place down. <laughs> I think Colin might have found himself a new little family. I love Blondie. <laughs> We've all been Colin at a party like that, haven't we? Quietly sitting there, awkwardly, not really sure what to do. No? Just me? Okay. Next clip. The government knows all about it, right? And they're keeping it quiet because there's a strain of flu and it affects only gay men and it kills them. It's called GRID. It started in America and it's coming over here. You can't have a gay flu and no one dies of flu anymore. They're dying in San Francisco. My friend said it's a plague. Don't be ridiculous. That would be all over the news. If it affected straight people, I think it would be all over the news. But it's also an interesting lesson of, at first glance, speaking to somebody like that, people might have preconceptions that are absolutely talking nonsense and that this is some weird conspiracy theory, how wrong people were. Break a leg, 
great show. Thanks, Bill. See you. Yeah, good luck. And you. See you later. La! Oh. La! Good luck, Gladys. Thanks. Wish me luck. Good luck. That's a really sweet little scene about the idea of a chosen family, I think. People that can't be themselves in their own family home and find community and family elsewhere. As well as the struggles, the sense of community and the strength that came from that sense of community really comes through. Have you seen this? On page 19. I wonder what page a mystery illness affecting straight people would have appeared on. Where do you see yourself in five years' time? Ten years' time? What do you want to be doing? So what are you going to do when you're older? What's the plan? Oh, my God. I want everything. West End. I want my name and lights. Big movie posters with me on them. I don't know. Ten years' time. I'd be happy still working here. You wait. Bless him. Give me five, six years, I'll be stinking rich. No, as long as I can find work, I don't care. Theatre, a little bit of TV. This mystery illness confined to page 11 of a newspaper is the thing that stripped away all of these people's hopes and dreams. Listen to their hopes and their dreams. For me, what this show is already doing is showing the humanity behind the illness. I want to learn everything. Like Mr. Coltrane taught me. Donegal Tweed... They make the dye out of blackberries. It's so beautiful. Oh, the close up of his face. He died alone, cold. The lid shut and that's it. Where's the humanity? Wow. Um, wow. In the space of one episode, to have you connect with a character that your heart gets broken so quickly is, well, what's the testament to the writing? It's also the subject matter that's so close to home. I'm a bit lost for words. I was going to do some sort of summing up outro thing, but I don't quite know what to say. As a gay man and as a doctor today, what sticks with me is, is the humanity that's there in the sense of community and the humanity that's taken out of medicine in the way that henry died i can't wait to watch the next one but i need a break i need to pause i need to sit and digest that one this doesn't feel like the sort of show i can just binge watch i need to stop and and i and reflect on this a little bit i hope you thought it was interesting and i hope you learned something with it and as we look at the next few episodes we'll be able to talk more about what the human immunodeficiency virus is and the difference between terms like hiv and aids remember the human immunodeficiency virus is the virus and AIDS acquired immunodeficiency syndrome is the illness that is caused by the virus in the same way we've got the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes COVID-19 HIV causes AIDS it's not the same thing though actually today we're trying to move away from using that term AIDS it's so stigmatized and what we talk about is HIV but we also have different parameters of looking at how weakened somebody's immune system might be because that matches with how susceptible they are to certain types of infection. 